standing here on the 18th fairway at Pebble Beach, right next to an iconic Bond car is kind of a dream come true. I mean, this is the atmosphere you want, this is the car you want. I don't know what would be left. I mean, it'd be great to have a Bond girl around, but I don't know if there are any Bond girls in the, in the area. So, uh, oh wait, maybe there are. Speaking of dreams, my name is Bond, Luna Bond. Luna Bond. <laughs> Can you believe it? And we're not making that up. This is Luna Bond. And, uh... I've waited all my life to be able to say this finally, <laughs> and here we are. What a better occasion than this. Yeah, so Luna and I are going to take a look, a little closer look at this very special James Bond replica vehicle that was built, hand built by Aston Martin. And Luna, you've got some great information on this car. Tell us some of the things you know about this car. Yeah, so first of all, it was 1963 when the DB5 was launched by Aston Martin. And fun fact, or something that I really care about at least, it was designed in Italy by Carrozzeria Touring Superleggera. This explains a lot, right? How, much, <laughs> how many people love the design of the DB5? Well, it, it, it's a British car, but it came from an, another part of Europe known for design. Great teamwork for sure between the Italians and the British, and this is the result of it. <laughs> but then used by uh, James Bond in the third movie uh, of the James Bond history as the Bond car, the most famous Bond car, probably the most iconic Bond car that has been used many, many times after then. And why not? Why shouldn't Aston Martin uh, come back on the market with 25 of these for 25 super lucky owners? Right and be sold out as soon as they announced them, even at the price of $3.5 million. Which, when, when you think about it, is funny because the original Bond car that was in that Goldfinger movie sold recently for $6.5 million. So really, it's a half-price Bond car. I mean, how can you go wrong? And apparently, I think he told me 4,500 hours per car to produce this. This was hand-built, just like they were back in the 1960s. They had to recreate that process. And I heard just recently from someone who's an insider at Aston Martin say, Take a good look at this, it's never gonna happen again. You will never see this factory hand building now over, over at Newport Pagnell. You're never gonna see this, see, see this factory hand building Aston Martin DB5s again. So a pretty cool situation to say the least. What is different on this DB5 is that Chris Corbold uh, helped the design team to introduce all the special gadgets that were in the original Bond cars back then. So Carl, do you want to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the features here, and it's got all the central controls here in the center console, front guns, roof hatch, bullet shield, number plate, and there's three slots for you to have your different number plates available. And then, of course, up at the top of those controls, you have the oil slick, the rear smoke, and then uh, the front and rear ram plates. Of course, you've got the, the giant wood grain wheel, very classic styling here. The front machine guns that fired. Uh, now, of course, this doesn't actually have machine guns that fire, but it does have, what is this, the, uh, the, the bumper rams. Bumper ram. rams, yeah, yeah. that pops out. And of course, there are parts all through the car that are special. There's a phone inside the car, which isn't as big a deal now, but having a phone in a car was a big deal in 1963, 64. And it's got the bulletproof shield on the back. It's got the oil slick uh, dispenser on the back. And uh, I think a, a smoke screen, right? You can also do a smoke screen. So, you know, you either get them to not shoot you because they can't see you, or if they do, they can't get through the bulletproof shield that's behind you and protecting you. And then I'm gonna add my favorite feature, which is definitely <laughs> the passenger seat ejector button. That is like my absolute favorite thing. That's right, on top of the shift knob. The top of the shift knob flips up and there's a red button under there. Like imagine being able to one of these days when you're with an annoying passenger in the car, just press a button and they're gone, boom. <laughs> and you know, I just wanna talk briefly though about how the car was utilized both in the original movies and in the new one, right? I mean, this established this kind of new, love of cars and movies coming together in the early 60s. This is pre-Bullet, you know, certainly long before Dukes of Hazard and a lot of these other pairings, certainly Fast and Furious. This was really kind of the first pairing of a powerful movie brand with an iconic car. And of course, it's never, never lost that iconic status. It still has it. And I mean, you know, you talked about this car, Luna. What did this car mean to you when you were growing up? I mean, Bond cars is what drew me into watching Bond movies. That that was like my number one 
source of interest for sure. So. And you've become you know, quite a car person yourself. So you could argue that these cars launched many car fanatics, one of them standing there right <laughs> next to us. Definitely can deny that. And actually the, part, the customization element of this is, is what blows my mind and that's what got me into the industry actually. And, uh, and I have to say as a car customizer myself, uh, unfortunately, this car is not road legal, as you can possibly imagine, with all these features. It can only be driven on closed roads or racetracks, or maybe just kept in a living room. <laughs> Something to show your friend over dinner. Although I keep thinking about the type of people who are buying cars like this, they're going to have access to dealers with dealer plates. I would so have this car out. I would do what it takes to get this car out on the street, at least on occasion, just for special occasions. Luna, I'm looking at this car. It's beautiful. Everything's functional on here. These parts actually move, they actually work. And we know the car runs great. It's a straight six that makes like 290 horsepower, I believe. A lot of horsepower when this car was new. And look, they're even moving things in the background for us. I think it's time. I'm just gonna hop in this car. And once I'm in, look, they can't catch me. I'm in the Bond car. I can get away, I can get away. No one's gonna stop me. And if the police chases you, you can just press a button. That's right. They won't even know who I really am. I'll just rotate the plate. I'll get away clean. <laughs> All right. It's 007. It's iconic. And we even threw in a Bond girl for you. So hope you had fun. And uh, what do you think, Luna? From Carl and Luna Bond, this is everything for today. We'll see you soon.